Hello and welcome Packer fans, I'm Narai Chapik, host of Pornler Packers Podcast. Thank you for being here, thank you for checking out this video. The dog days of training camp have officially set in. We've had 14 practices, can you believe that? We are entering our second preseason game. There's only six practices left uh, in training camp. There's only two more public practices left, so if you have not yet made your trip out to Lambeau to catch a training camp practice, you only have two more opportunities. But we're here to talk about the uh, upcoming game tomorrow. We're going to face off against the Baltimore Ravens. The Packers make their first road trip out to Baltimore, and I'm going to talk about a few things that went over this last week, this last couple days of practice, and I'm uh, going to give you some of my what to watch for as we head into this next game so without further ado it's time we pour ourselves another Packers podcast So before we get started, I'm not gonna not gonna suggest that you subscribe to this channel. You know, I had this epiphany just the other day. I watch a lot of YouTube, which I'm assuming some of you out there also do. And the one thing that bugs me more than anything is when people, you know, ask, you know, to subscribe, click the like button. Maybe, maybe you'll do that if you just feel the urge to and you just want to be a part of this. But what I wanted to start this video off with was uh, I, I made myself a little bit of a purchase. So I got I got the official away jersey. Well the semi-official away jersey of Darnell Savage, our new rookie safety, heading into the 2019 season, heading up the Green Bay Packers defense. And uh, it, it, in case you didn't know, there was a $30 off coupon when it came to Packers.com. These things usually retail for like 130 bucks. I did not want to spend that for a custom jersey. But uh, when it dropped 200, well, that was right inside my price range and I decided to make the jump. So uh, I hope I hope you, uh, you know, uh, learned something. I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this. Let's talk about some Packers football, right? So the starters, no pun intended, are going to play. They're going to start. They're going to uh, they're going to go out there and perform on Thursday night. We're finally going to get our first chance to see uh, the Rodgers heading the offense. And it's uh, it's very exciting. I mean, if you don't get uh, if that doesn't get your blood pumping a little bit. I'm not really sure what else will maybe. Maybe 22 days from now when we face off against Chicago, that will get your blood pumping. But this is the this is the first time that we're going to see the offense. Matt LaFleur did confirm in his press conference yesterday that the starters will play uh, the first quarter or, or so. So he might keep those guys in there a little bit longer if they if he wants to see one more you know session with the offense, one more session with the defense. So he's being a little bit vague, but for sure well, the first quarter. And uh, and although you know there won't be a whole lot to talk about with with the offense and defense when it comes to their schemes and, and what you'll get out of it. Um, it's gonna be rather vanilla, if you will. Uh, this will be the first opportunity to see Aaron Rodgers and LaFleur and their interactions um, with Rodgers on the field and, and LaFleur calling the plays. Um, you're gonna possibly see some new formations out of the offense. We're gonna be seeing a lot more of Aaron Rodgers underneath center. That's gonna be a new theme heading into the year. And then uh, the defensive rush is gonna be on full display. And, and that is absolutely awesome. We're talking about Kenny Clark, Rashawn Gary, we're talking about both the Smiths all on the field at the same time, create, creating that havoc that we've heard so much about up to this point in training camp and hopefully, hopefully causing all sorts of problems for Lamar Jackson if he does end up deciding to play. So I'm excited. Um, I'm going to get to see my boy uh, Savage out there with, with his new partner in crime, um, Adrian Amos. And then, of course, we're going to see Alexander. I got an Alexander jersey around here. Yeah, it's over there. Uh, it's it's going to be fun. It's going to be very short. Uh, only, like I said, only one quarter. I'm actually going to miss the first half of the game because I'm going to be out there uh, uh, making the bacon. <laughs> but in other great news... Let's talk about how the Packers managed to dodge a bullet. It looks as though Oren Burks avoided a potential serious season uh, ending injury. So he left Thursday's matchup against the Texans early, um, trying to, to tackle Joe Webb and um, had that pectoral injury that he left the game with. Now, some reports um, coming out of training camp throughout the weekend did state that this would be a potential season ending injury that he may have to have surgery and would miss the full season. 
However, in an interview with Tom Silverstein of the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel yesterday, Burke stated, after consulting with a specialist, it was determined it would heal on its own. It's day to day and no time frame has been given. And then uh, Gutekunst in his press conference echoed the same sentiment saying, we're still working through the exact timeline. However, later on in his press conference, because um, when you just keep grilling some of these guys, uh, they get, you know, maybe give you a little bit more tidbit of what's actually going on in their head. Later on the press conference, Gutekinds was asked, how do you feel about the inside linebacker position and do you feel like you need to make any moves um, with Oren Burks being out with an injury? His response, and he was um, very candid about this, he says, I'm really hoping Oren's thing is gonna be short term. We'll get him back quicker than I think. And then he kind of uh, trailed off a little bit there. So I think what he was going to say was, I, I, we're going to get him back sooner than uh, I think we originally anticipated. Right now, I'd like to get through to this next game, see where Oren is at, and then where we are at as a defensive unit. So um, if Burks does end up missing any significant time, um, there is there is the silver lining as far as what the Packers plan to do. And they are actually planning, um, obviously, what they need to do if Burks missed time because he's, he's not going to be playing tomorrow night. So rookies Ty Summers and Curtis Bolton lead the charge. Bolton uh, is an undrafted uh, rookie coming out of Oklahoma and has shown flashes throughout training camp, while Ty, a.k.a. Captain America, has had a great first... Uh, he had a great first half against the Texans where he registered nine uh, tackles in that first half. He did finish the game with 10. Um, and still the Packers have kept him even with that outstanding performance and even with the injury of Oren Burks, they've kept him with that second team um, as the play caller a la Blake Martinez. So he's kind of heading up the defensive unit. He's learning the playbook and they've been keeping him in that role so far. But I would not be surprised if he has himself as great of a performance as he had last week against the Texans that they will eventually start to implement him more and more into that first team defense. And, and re in reality, when you talk about the regular season coming around, I mean, if, if you have these guys that stand out and they play and they can pick up the playbook and they're they're more than capable, they're going to be using um, they're going to be using Ty Summers, I think, a lot more. And, and that's going to be honestly, that's the first thing that I'm going to have my eyes on while watching the game tomorrow night. I think that's something you should pay attention to as well. If Ty Summers, again, can compound off of his excellent performance that he had in Thursday's night's first preseason game, um, then he's only going to solidify himself as that next guy uh, next guy to Blake Martinez. And that was um, that was something that I kind of saw some of his footage coming of coming out of college that he could do. He, he's a he's a natural born football player. He loves to hit people. Um, he doesn't he, he doesn't hesitate too much and when he does um, Blake Martinez actually was quoted in his locker room interview yesterday that when he does hesitate he's just overthinking he wants to be perfect but at the end of the day he just needs to go out there be uh, Bobby Boucher go out there and tackle the quarterback and just make things happen um, outside of those two the Packers also have been experimenting by using Raven Green and uh, some various sub packages so they might bring him down from that safety position because once you have Savage and Amos in there as full-time starters, you're gonna have uh, someone with the town of Raven Green that you're gonna wanna have on the field. So they will potentially use him in some various sub packages. And they're also using a uh, special team standout, James Crawford uh, at times as well. So this will be obviously a, a development that we see over the next couple of weeks. Uh, I don't really, I find it hard to believe that Burks will be back by the time the regular season rolls around, but Gudikins is secretly optimistic and so that has me secretly optimistic, um, and that's all we can go off at this point. We'll wait, we'll update you when there is further news to talk about. But in other injury-related activities or news, um, holy crap, I just, I just lost my... I just lost my page. So in other injury related news with the Packers, a couple new players did make their way uh, back off of that injury list and onto the active roster. So we're talking about Josh Jones, we're talking about Aaron Jones, Corey Lindsley, Preston Smith, and yes, Josh Jackson all have been cleared to play or participate in practice. Participate in practice. A lot of these guys are being strictly kept to one-on-one -on -one drills so far. And uh, on the flip side of it, Kingsley Kiki joins the now um, the now injured list side of things with both fullbacks Danny Vitale and Malcolm Johnson, Trevor Davis, Kevin King, Jamal Williams, and yes, James, Jay Sternberger all heading up that, that injury list. A, a few notes about some of these players that I wanted to discuss. We talk about Aaron Jones. So I've been out for a week and a half, a little, pretty much, well, let's, just, let's just say the entire training camp, to be quite frank. He did perform in 11 on 11 team activities yesterday. However, he will not participate in tomorrow night's game. 
Uh, he didn't refer when they interviewed him uh, coming back off of that injury list. When they interviewed him, he did say he didn't think of his hamstring injury as an actual injury. He referred to it as just tightness that he had in his hamstring, but it was mainly precautionary. And this is, you know, a theme that we see with the Packers as far as just making sure that their players are healthy and uh, they're being a little bit overcautious, which is fine at this point. I think if something like this were to have reared its ugly head um, sometime in the regular season, Jones would not have missed any time. At least that's the indication that I get from the interview and some of the things that I have read. Josh Jackson, yes, he passed his physical on Saturday, so he is available at, to be out in the field and participate. They have kept him from um, team activities for the most part. He's mainly focused on individual drills, but uh, and quite honestly, there hasn't been a whole lot of talk or articles about Josh Jackson, so we'll keep a, our eyes on the radar for that one. I, I suspect that he will not suit up for Thursday night either. And then with both of our fullbacks out with injuries, so we're talking about Danny Vitale um, and what's the, and, and Malcolm Johnson. Um, when we talk about those guys being out, the Packers then went out and signed fullback Tommy Bohanan. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. On Monday, uh, he'll be entering his sixth year in the league. He was originally drafted in the seventh round by the New York Jets, and then he spent uh, his next two. Well, he spent his first three years in uh, New York, and then his next two years he spent uh, down in Jacksonville under, of course, offensive coordinator. Nathaniel Hackett. So he has a little bit of a connection there. He has played for Nathaniel Hackett before. He's played in a total of 68 career games and has started in 30 of those games. Not not crazy statistics, but he has experience in the league and he can come in there and, you know, hopefully fill a role while some of these other fullbacks, <coughs> Danny Vitale, get healthy and back on the field. So obviously with, with the signing of a fullback, Matt LaFleur and the Packers believe strongly about having a fullback in their system. A year removed from not even having a fullback on the roster with Mike McCarthy's team last year, um, I think in order to run this offense, they they are kind of dead set on that fullback position and what they can do with that fullback position. So with these two guys out, they bring someone in. Hopefully he can pick up the playbook. He has only had the playbook for about two days. Um, and, and with that being said, I don't expect him to be that big of an X factor or really get a whole lot of playing time in uh, the game against the Ravens tomorrow night. So, so because he will be primarily out, yes, we have a, a number of running backs going into the game, a lot of running backs on our roster, but that role, again, in my opinion, will belong to Dexter Williams, who uh, is now my second player that you need to keep an eye out for in tomorrow night's game. Um, coming off of his 14 carry, 62 yard performance, I look forward to seeing him in there with that number one offense. You're going to have Aaron Rodgers obviously under center, and you're going to get a, get a chance to see what Dexter Williams can do with this this first string offense. If he can, you know, provide some runs and some yards off the run to open up play action and, and everything that Lafleur wants to do with that uh, run heavy offense. Like Ty Summers, if he can build upon his performance that he like he had last week against the Texans. This is going to really uh, start to get things interesting as far as that RB2, that running back two position, because Jamal Williams is, has been out. He's been out for a little while now. If Dexter Williams continues to show that he's picking up the plays, he's picking up the speed, he can go out there and uh, fill in. Um, it, it could be real interesting if Dexter Williams steals that number two running back spot at least to start off the season unless Jamal Williams finds a way to fight back. Um, later on, you know, later on throughout the season. So two things that that stood out. So we're kind of talking about injuries, and we're talking about players that, um, you know, if if as they go out, other people start to fill in, and then roster spots roster spots begin to be uh, taken, and that's just the beauty of training camp. But there were two interesting comments that came out of Gutekind's uh, press conference on Tuesday. Uh, the first was in response to how nervous he was about having Aaron and the other starters go out there uh, for a Thursday night game. And, and he jokingly said, you know, probably uh, one of the best things that happened was the uh, the lockout, the players lockout when they actually didn't have to worry about having any preseason games and that kept players healthy. So he joked about that, but I love hearing some of this insight of, of Brian Gutekunst and it, it gives me you know, it gives me, I guess, chills in a sense because you can tell he he's a, a football mind. He's been around the game a long time. He goes on to say that there's a balance. You know what your team needs to do to prepare itself to win games in the National Football League, and there's a lot of work to be done to get to that point. Then he goes on to say, availability and durability are not only talents, but are skills to be developed. And that's part of being a professional to get out there each and every day. So I love where his head's at with that. I mean, he, he, he nails home that first point. And then his second comment was in response to if he had already had a sense of what this 30-man roster or 
53-man roster is going to look like at the end of training camp. And without a pause, he goes, I, I think it's wide open, quite frankly. I know from my end, there really hasn't been any decisions made at all. And part of that, in regards to um, making the roster, is being able to show up each and every single day, be consistent, be healthy, and be out there on the field. So we saw the effects of uh, being injury prone directly cost someone like Jason Spriggs a, a, a roster spot when he was cut just well, it was probably about a week ago. Um, he was not able to stay healthy and therefore they moved on from him. Now, other players that can, you know, you can start to consider maybe in this category, Kevin King. So regardless of his uh, upside that he brings to that defense, he needs to be put on notice as well in, in regards to some of the comments that Gutekunst had in his pre press conference. With talents like Tony Brown, uh, Chandon Sullivan, and yes, even Kadar Holman, who does not rank very high on my Richter scale, uh, they're all lurking right there in the background. They're waiting for their opportunity to go out there and, and show that they can play in the National Football League. And when, when you have someone like King, who has been injury prone in the past, is right now suffering with a hamstring injury, which we still have not gotten a full update on the, the severity of that injury. Um, it, it puts him, he's, he's gotta get out there. He's gotta find a way to get back out there on the field. And, uh, and fight for a job. And, and that goes too for even someone like Trevor Davis. Now, Trevor Davis, up to, up to his injury that he faced um, or that he had against the Texans, was having an outstanding training camp. He was, he was someone that I considered to be a lock at that wide receiver position because not only was he successful in the kick return and punt return game, but he was making catches. He was getting open, he was making catches, and he was playing wide receiver, which was something that we had not seen 100% out of Trevor Davis up to that point. So when you talk about that for, for Trevor Davis missing practices, you, we have a lot of strong competition among that entire wide receiver group. MVS is finally starting to click with Aaron Rodgers after, you could say, a slow start. Uh, Geronimo is flying way under the radar. Nobody's even talking about Geronimo Allison, and that is that is shocking because he has developed the trust that it takes to uh, to be you know Aaron Rodgers' best friend on the field, to be that safety blanket that he wants. It's exactly what you see out of um, Devontae Adams and exactly what you see out of Jay Kumro, who seems to catch every single damn pass that comes his direction. Um, he still managed to snag a 65-yard touchdown reception off of Tim Boyle uh, just the other day in practice, and he has a, a what is it, a splint on his pinky finger, and he's like wincing every time he catches the ball. So you got him going out there and putting everything out on the line. You have St. Brown, who dropped out of practice Monday, but did return to practice on Tuesday. He had some nice catches um, that he made in heavy traffic uh, yesterday in practice. Jamon Moore, who struggled, who I struggled to defend uh, in my last video. Uh, according to Matt LaFleur, he had his best practice of the entire year on Sunday, uh, where he had three great catches and team periods, but most importantly, he didn't even drop a pass on uh, on Sunday's practice, and that has been his his just downfall up to this point. And then you have Alan Lazard, who had that beautiful 27-yard touchdown pass. Um, he is continuing, continuing to shine. So I've talked about these receivers, right? But then there's one more person. There's one more receiver that I think should make you know Trevor Davis a little bit nervous about the competition that's happening out there. And that would be Darius Shepard. He is my third and final player to watch heading into tomorrow night's game. So Shepard, who had a good showing during family night, and then he made this, I'm gonna show it on the screen, this spectacular touchdown grab last week where he just goes up there, he, he catches it in traffic, he pulls it down. It was a very dangerous pass, quite frankly. Shepard is continuing to get more and more reps with the first string offense and is he is the closest thing that the Packers have found to that true slot receiver with the absence or the departure of Randall Cobb uh, earlier this spring. He's filling that void. On Tuesday during the 11 on 11 team period, Shepard caught a quick hitch in the left slot from Aaron Rodgers, got a block from St. Brown and turned it upfield for at least a 10 yard gain. And this was on a third and seven scenario. So he's he's making those catches from Rodgers and he's doing things with them. And then to just put the cherry on top, I, I could use a drink, but I'm gonna wait. But to put the cherry on top, they're, they're putting him as that number one kick returner and punt returner for special teams. So. If you can get that role, if you can take Trevor Davis's position as a kick returner, punt returner, and you can make plays as a receiver, um, Davis needs to find a way to get back out on the field, and he needs to find a way to get back on the field real quick. Hopefully that stinger injury that he uh, obtained last week in practice against the Texans is nothing serious. I'd love to see Trevor Davis make the team, but I, the Packers 
have receivers. If you are outside of the Packers organization, which we probably all are who are watching this or including myself who is talking, but you can you can hear on ESPN, you can hear on NFL Network that there, there's worry about this wide receiving group. Why did they not go out there and sign an Antonio Brown? Why did they not go get maybe even Odell Beckham or someone else to come in there and help support Devontae Adams? The more and more that I see these guys practice, the more that I see these preseason games, and and they they have a lot more talent at that wide receiving group than than we even are aware of. Um, you're, you're easily looking of all the names that I listed off. There's five solid options, and it becomes a really interesting dichotomy that if you know if things don't quite go gelling or go well with uh, Allison or even with MVS that you have these guys that are going to be competing for playing time. I would be shocked if Kumaro does not see the field uh, 50% of the time as far as plays throughout the regular season. Um, I don't know. I get I get excited about this. It's kind of eye-opening when you start to really dive into it. So going into our second preseason game, Darius Shepard, your needle is pointing way up. And, uh, and like I said, he's proof that there is lots of depth among that wide receiving group. So that sums up exactly what I want to talk about in this video. I, uh, I try to keep it short. Again, I don't know how long these videos go. Kickoff tomorrow night is at 6.30 Central Time. Again, they will be playing the Baltimore Ravens, If you ca in case you missed that up to this point. I do not think I will be posting a video on Friday. Uh, I'm going to get home from work on Thursday night. I'm going to watch the rest of the game. Probably going to play a little bit of Madden. And then on Friday, my son is having his second birthday party. So I am going to uh, have a lot to do to get that ready around the house. And I will not have time to post a video. But I will do a follow-up to the game and a little bit of a recap of the game, possibly on Sunday or early next week. Um, as always, I hope you enjoyed the content. If you uh, like what you have seen, Subscribe. I'm gonna do the shame, shameless, uh, the, the subscribing thing right now at the end of the video because uh, usually only 10 minutes of view time occurs, and most of you guys turn this off. So subscribe down below, comment down below, uh, what uh, just your thoughts in general. I guess a little bit of support would be nice. I'm always, I'm always that motivates me to be better. Um, but until next time, <laughs> I will see you on the internet. Thanks for watching.